All righty. Okay. So uh, welcome to the LD4 2022 conference session, leveraging Wikidata for ethical virtual reassembly and recontextualization of cultural heritage. My name is Jim Han, I'm the session facilitator. Uh, I'll be introducing our speakers, but before I do that, I just uh, will review this slide that perhaps you've seen before. Um, and note the links for our conference website, uh, the important links that we have there, including the code of conduct, uh, Slack invite, if you want to use Slack after this session to uh, continue the conversation, you could go ahead and do that. I'll drop these links um, in the chat. And just so you know, uh, most sessions are recorded. This one isn't being streamed, but it will be available later at the LD4 um, YouTube space. So we'll, we'll have it up there probably later today or early next week. Um, with that being said, let me stop my screen share and I will introduce our speaker. Okay, so Anne Hanel Chen specializes in the art and archaeology of the globally connected late Roman world. She's the founder and director of the NEH funded International Digital Dura Europus Archive, aimed at the Reass virtual reassembly and recontextualization of archaeological information from a uniquely preserved archaeological site of cross-disciplinary significance. Dr. Chen has published on Roman, Persian, and digital humanities topics and taught equally wide-ranging coursework. Welcome, Anne, and we're all looking forward to your presentation. Hi, everybody, and thanks so much to Jim for that kind introduction. Um, I assume that you can see my screen at this point. If you can't, I guess, give me a shout. Um, as you just heard from Jim, I am the director of the International Digital Dura Europos Archive. We call ourselves IDEA, uh, the work in progress initiative that I'm going to be talking to you about today. So my plan today is to give you a brief overview of the goals of the project and then demonstrate what we see as the promise that our approach holds for archaeological sites whose excavation and collection history is entangled in colonialist dynamics, where there's a wealth of dispersed and previously unintegrated legacy data and substantial challenges presented by inconsistent naming traditions. So first to the goals. IDEA is aimed at reassembling and recontextualizing archaeological information from the ancient site of Dura Europos. Dura Europos is located in eastern Syria and was first excavated a century ago by Yale University and the French Academy of Inscriptions and Letters when Syria was under the French mandate. It's a fascinating site on the border between Greco-Roman and Persian domains, and archaeological evidence tells us that the population was multilinguistic and that multiple religions were uh, practiced side by side. It's a site that is widely regarded across many uh, disciplines, so archaeology, art history, classics, religious studies, just to name a few. It's regarded as a key resource for understanding the ancient world. And as such, it's important that high quality information pertaining to the site is made as available and readily comprehensible as possible. But for a site that's regarded as a singular primary source by so many different communities and disciplines, its particular excavation and collection history presents a number of difficulties that will likely sound familiar to others who've worked at sites with uh, rich legacy data. Content related to excavation at Dura Europos, both artifacts and archival materials, is physically dispersed into a number of collections across the world. I show you here a map that marks the distribution of Dura artifacts. This map would be even more complex if you marked all of the archival collections that contain content like personal papers and correspondence related to, related to Dura. In our case, the colonialist dynamics at the moment of excavation landed a vast number of artifacts from the site in Western collections. Some 15,000 Dura artifacts and the paper archives connected to the large scale excavations of the site are physically located in Western countries with the Yale University Art Gallery, we call it UAG, uh, holding the largest proportion of those. The first of the, or, sorry, the rest of the artifacts 
uncovered by the joint French-American excavations in the early 20th century, reside in the National Museum of, in Damascus, as agreed under the terms of the partage at the time of excavation. Recognizing inequalities in access to travel, UAG has been in the vanguard among collections in making its artifacts and archival documents available via open access databases online with high quality imagery and other Western collections that hold smaller amounts of uh, during content have followed suit. This has been an important foundational step that allows us to begin thinking about how to go from availability of online resources to increased accessibility and discoverability of the digital content that institutions have now provided. Currently, online institutional databases providing access to digital surrogates for content in an institution's collection usually have to be searched independently and are usually cataloged in the language of the host institution meaning that much of the material related to Dura is searchable only in English, with some in French. Much of the digitized content that would allow one to draw on the site of Dura Europos for one's research, whether that be for the purposes of research on the ancient or the more recent periods to which the site bears witness, has not been discoverable in Arabic. Part of the difficulty of integrating and making independent databases intersearchable is the problem of inconsistent naming traditions. Both the naming conventions for the site itself and for features within the site have often shifted over time due to chronological changes in naming conventions, linguistic differences in names, or even interpretational conflict about the identification of a particular building. Following on from that, each institution or database with content related uh, to a given place or specific feature within an archaeological site may use different versions of a place name in their own cataloging practices, which makes it difficult for speakers of any language to be sure that they've located all the content relevant to their area of inquiry, to confidently identify where an object was found according to object metadata, or to be sure uh, which building is referenced by an archival photograph or drawing. Cataloging language and choices regarding what name to call a site by are both important subjectivities in metadata, that can in turn bias the digital discoverability and therefore accessibility of content. I'm willing to wager that almost everyone in attendance has had the experience of searching a collections database for content related to a place name, uh, returning zero results, uh, researching with another language's variant on the spelling of the place name and returning hits on the second search. That is the problem of discoverability. How easy is it for someone to find content related to their topic of inquiry? Imagine now that an institution holds archives related to a topic of interest and has just made digital surrogates of all their archival content available open access online. In this scenario, however, all the metadata for those archival materials is not only in a language you don't understand, but also in a wholly different script than the one that you normally communicate in. How likely is it that a scholar or a member of the educated but non-specialist general public would surface the fictional institution's digital content while searching about your topic of interest online? Even with archaeological content online, it's still not necessarily readily discoverable and easy to understand for all stakeholder audiences. IDEA is therefore trying to bridge some of those gaps using linked open data and specifically Wikidata. Since you're attending this conference, you probably already have some sense of LOD or linked open data and the basics of how it works. But just in case you don't, the very simplified idea of linked open data is that structuring metadata according to some shared principles that allow for a lot of flexibility and implementation can ideally allow for data to speak the same computer based language behind the scenes, no matter what human language is used in cataloging. Structuring data according to LOD principles ideally allows computers to understand complex information and infer relationships between various topics, people, contexts, publications, data sets, and the like, more like humans, thus enabling computers to understand more complex questions or answer more complex questions in much more accurate ways than has traditionally been possible. Uh, I've tried to schematize the concept for you here. So imagine three separately cataloged and curated sets of digital information managed by three different entities. The two institutions on the left have records for items associated with places marked in blue. LOD would allow these two databases not only to talk to one another, 
but also to talk to the geographic database on the right, ultimately allowing the computer to infer that the objects in the separate institutional databases are in fact associated with the same place. Uh, doing this ultimately allows us to kind of build a web of data, kind of like the, the cloud that I'm showing you here and that you have probably um, seen numerous times before. The integration of Dura's linguistically and materially diverse data into the LOD ecosystem offers a way to digitally reconstitute archaeological assemblages and their contexts, make those artifacts and assemblages more easily discoverable in a host of world languages, while also offering up the site's data for open reuse within other projects with different diachronic, geographic, thematic, and comparative emphases. Determined primarily by our concerns to develop a project that could serve multilinguistic users, open Dura data up for collaborative curation with stakeholder audiences that have not previously had access to it, we're thinking primarily of Arabic speakers, and allow for the integration of Damascus Dura collections uh, at some later date, IDEA has, had, uh, has opted to build its backend in Wikidata. Wikidata, as many of you will already know, is a free, low barrier to entry LOD platform used by a growing number of GLAM institutions that allows users to access data and contribute edits in some 400 world languages, including Arabic. Wikidata also features a range of built-in tools for LOD annotation of images, as well as on-the-fly visualizations that can be harnessed and passed through to a user-friendly front end that I'll talk about in a moment. As you can see here in the query I'm showing you, in partnership with the various host collections, my team and I have made almost 15,000 Dura artifacts held in eight different North American and international institutions searchable for the first time together. Just creating records for these artifacts in the Wikidata environment now means that these items are discoverable in hundreds of languages at a basic level, and this is the key, without any translation work. I'm showing you here a Wikidata record for a relief kept in the Yale University Art Gallery that depicts Heracles wearing the Nemean lion skin. As you can see, not every metadata statement has as yet been translated into every world language. But thanks to the global Wikidata editorial community, widely shared concepts that are relevant to records from Dura Europos, like archaeological artifact, have been translated into various world languages as has the concept associated with the god known as Heracles. In practice, this means an Arabic or Japanese speaker, for instance, would be able to search in their own native language for the equivalent of archeological artifact depicting Her Heracles and turn up the same results as someone searching in English. We're also making use of geospatial data within the LOD environment to ease some of the challenges around naming traditions that can make it difficult to join up information and resources about what is in actuality the same place. Ensuring that a researcher will turn up all the relevant results when searching for information pertaining to the building known as the Temple of Bell at Dora Europos, when over the course of the last hundred years since its excavation, different authors have referred to that same building by different names, can present a challenge since traditional keyword searching would require quite a bit of previous knowledge on the part of a user in order to be comprehensive. Within the LOD environment, it's possible to gather up all the known name variants for a place, associate uh, those names with a particular set of geographic coordinates, and assign that place a stable non-linguistic identifier. Ancient world primary sources, both textual and material, archival documents, that's things like excavation logs and photographs, and modern books and articles all make mention of or are otherwise attributable to places with a fixed geographical location. Within the LOD environment, therefore, essentially tagging various kinds of resources with the stable identifier defined for the place with which the, resources is, the resource is associated allows, oops, sorry, um, allows the place to serve as a sort of virtual reassembly node for objects potentially kept in different physical locations, cataloged in different languages, and possibly following any number of different naming conventions. Citing these stable spatial identifiers within the LOD ecosystem ultimately enables on-the-fly map visualizations and data sorting of the type 
that can communicate at a glance, contextualizing information that previously would have required hours of research, ability to read in English, and access to physical archives and specialized print materials. In partnership with Pleiades, the LOD Gazetteer uh, Authority for the Ancient Mediterranean World, IDEA is creating a comprehensive series of entries for all component parts of Doria Ropos, down to the building level, as well as case studies that go down even further in granularity to the wall level. All entities defined in Pleiades will be mirrored in Wikidata to facilitate automatic mapping in the IDEA uh, front-end interface. In practice then, for each object whose find spot is known, or each archival document, say an archival photograph depicting a building, one can create a machine readable statement that cites a Durian Gazetteer entity as a find spot or a location depicted. Doing so effectively enables the computer to pull and map coordinates from the record for the building or other archeological feature in question, and use those for plotting the find spot or of a specific artifact or a group of artifacts. In the first example I'm showing you here, you can see that using this process, we can clearly tether an artifact removed from its original context to its physical find spot. The example you see here is a wall painting today on view in New Haven, but we've been able to demonstrate precisely which wall within the Temple of Bell it was removed from. The same principle allows one to visualize which artifacts were found together in association with a single building or archeological feature, no matter which collection holds the various objects today. So we can use this process to effectively digitally recreate archeological assemblages. If you're new to Wikidata or Sparkle queries, at this point, you may be thinking that the query interfaces I've used in the presentation are a little bit daunting and we don't necessarily disagree. Um, we're working with a team of talented programmers to create a web application with a user-friendly uh, front-end interface that shields users from having to interact directly with Wikidata. Instead, the web application acts as a skin that calls out to Wikidata to perform dynamic searches and pull in relevant Wikidata generated visualizations and uh, related content. The web application code is uh, open source and is available on GitHub. The interface is functional, but still a work in progress. So this is just a sneak peek. Uh, in particular, the dynamic mapping of geoshapes is possible in the Wikidata query service, um, but pulling those visualizations into the web application is still in the construction phase and is part of the work that has been greenlighted thanks to funds from the NEH. Um, but from the browse page, as it functions so far, you can search in real time um, Dura content, regardless of its home institution. And if we click into a specific object, um, the application pulls information from Wikidata and other open sources into convenient tabs, such that users can browse auto-generated map content and timelines relevant to the uh, chosen object, as well as 3D models, uh, open publications, annotated IIIF imagery, and related records uh, like those for the building find spot or other objects found in the same assemblage. Um, I'm going to switch now to the dynamic version and try to demo for you some of the user interface as a work in progress. And I intend for this bit to be more conversational. Uh, so I welcome you to jump in with questions as I noodle around in the um, interface. Let me just stop my share for a second and switch gears. Hmm. Okay. I hope that you can see my uh, screen there. <clears throat> um, essentially, what you're seeing is uh, our work in progress interface that pulls in uh, content from Wikidata. And if you click into individual uh, cards associated with uh, 
a specific record from Dory Ropos. You can see that uh, essentially information from Wikidata is pulled into these tabs on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, it also pulls in a Wikipedia article if there is a relevant one. Um, in this case, it will pull in IIIF imagery and other media that uh, is included in Wikimedia Commons. So you can um, scroll through images that are automatically pulled in. Uh, it has a IIIF viewer so that you can uh, take advantage of the deep zoom. It will use uh, queries from uh, the Wikiverse um, to on the fly create timelines and uh, maps. So I'm showing you here a timeline that pulls the relevant dates associated with this object and uh, maps them into a, a timeline. So you can see the uh, date associated with the, the foundation of the site itself, the creation of the object, um, the time of its discovery, and then here um, a date associated with an article published on this particular um, structure. Then uh, any open access resources that are cited as um, uh, that are uh, cite cited as um, uh, resources um, on the, the Wikidata item for a, a particular statement are pulled into a bookshelf. I'll show you that um, on a, a different example in just a moment. Let me go back to the browse interface. So here. Um, let's see, the library, you can click out here and it will take you to uh, the open access article or uh, book itself so that you can navigate to relevant resources directly from the, the web interface. A couple of other cool things that uh, it can do, it will take uh, individual statements from Wikidata and we'll pull them into a, a stats dashboard. So telling you about the kind of material, the, the measurements that are relevant for a, a particular kind of object. Um, in this case, this object maps a, or depicts a, a bunch of different locations. It's a, it's a map. Um, and so here using the, the Wikidata um, service, uh, we are pulling in map information and dynamically uh, uh, mapping locations that are associated with this particular um, object. So these are the locations that are depicted on that map. Um, and you could navigate to uh, relevant information about each of those places from the right hand uh, toolbar. Um, and in that case, uh, this is just a preview of basically where we're going with the, the mapping component uh, that I showed you in the, the query service. So imagine that uh, maps like this will also have a, a tab um, for objects that are uh, associated, found together in, in the same location, or um, a, a map that, that shows you the location of the uh, actual a uh, fine spot of a, of a particular um, artifact. Then showing you here, we have a component that will in um,
available 3D reconstructions. So for this particular artifact, there's a 3D reconstruction available and you can manipulate it right in the uh, user interface without having to do um, additional searching. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to demonstrate is the use of LOD uh, annotation tools so within the Wikidata environment, there's a tool called the image positions tool. And this allows you to make image annotations uh, on the object. And these can be pulled into our interface as well. So in this case, you could uh, make annotations that define particular elements within an image. Uh, so communicate additional information that way. Um, where this really becomes useful though is uh, with archival photography. So I'm going to uh, switch back over to my PowerPoint presentation now. My slides got a little bit about, out of order. Apologize for that. Um, and move over to show you how we're using image positions with archival photography. Um, zoom there, face. So here you can see that I am uh, showing you a demonstration of a, an archival photograph from our site that uh, has been marked up in Wikidata image positions. And essentially we're using our uh, gazetteer locations to annotate the image and uh, make clear to a computer and a human uh, uh, user that the specific location that is depicted within the photograph is a very specific feature within the, the site. So we're using uh, the gazetteer location to highlight that. Uh, also, it's the case that when these photographs were first cataloged um, in their uh, traditional archival um, uh, circumstances, they didn't include any metadata that uh, made any indication of anything except for the archival content, or sorry, the uh, architectural content that was depicted within the photograph. And the man that you see here um, within the photograph is essentially an archival silence uh, because he was essentially to the excavators a, a, a human scale to give context to the, the archeological feature that they were actually interested in photographing. Um, the way that this uh, image is recorded makes no mention of the fact that there's actually a human being in the photograph. So using um, the tools in Wikidata, we can, for the first time, make it clear and <laughs> uh, uh, communicate that there are actually human individuals uh, in some of these photographs. We may not know their names at this point. Um, we can also indicate uh, a very specific um, artifact. So I uh, couldn't find the, the record ID for this one uh, right off the top of my head. But uh, if I were to go back in, I could actually tag this with a, a record ID for this very specific artifact, since we have uh, records connected with um, the, the artifacts from uh, Dory Ropos. So one of the things that is important about this is that in making these annotations, these annotations will in turn uh, create metadata statements associated uh, uh, with this object. And this provides more ways to discover the object and to come into it. Somebody with a different uh, kind of uh, knowledge base than my own might be able to look at this photograph and uh, say, if we got local populations um, involved in looking through these photographs, maybe they would be able to actually identify some of the, the individuals uh, who are depicted in the photographs. Or uh, maybe somebody with a different knowledge base could comment about the early 20th century uh, aspects of dress 
that uh, are preserved in this photograph. The, there's a lot of different ways that this image could be useful um, and, and uh, discoverable if we put it into the Wikidata community. And uh, the NIH grant that, that our project um, has received will also allow us to uh, create a series of workshops and edit-a-thons uh, with partner institutions who serve um, Syrian refugee populations. And so we are teaching folks to edit Wikidata and uh, to uh, create new statements. Um, there is uh, a large Arabic translation component to the NEH project as well. Uh, we will have a dedicated team working to uh, translate one-to-one uh, -one the uh, titles and, or sorry, the labels and the description um, of some of the, uh, no, all of the uh, Wikidata content that is related to uh, Dury Europos to make it uh, more user-friendly for uh, Arabic speaking populations. And it's our hope that with these um, workshops and edit thons as we're kind of spreading the word about uh, Wikidata and, and how it can be useful, uh, that maybe we'll catch the interest of, of some um, new editors uh, who are Arabic speakers who bring different perspectives to uh, this collection of, of resources that has never really been uh, open and accessible uh, previously. So I'm going to end it there for now. Uh, I am happy to take your questions and uh, uh, to chat with you about what we're up to. Um, let me just skip forward to uh, give you my contact information. Uh, also, special thanks to all of these folks and institutions that we're working together with. Uh, as I mentioned, the user interface um, is based off of uh, open access code, and that will be updated and made accessible. Um, the code as it stands so far is accessible at the GitHub pub, uh, GitHub uh, uh, URL that is here on the page and that Jim kindly put in the, the chat for us. Um, and the documentation for the project is actually at the wiki project YDEA, so uh, Y-D-E-A, that's a, a typo there on the screen. Um, the project has recently changed its name, uh, so we haven't yet uh, updated the, the documentation link, but we invite you to uh, follow along with our progress um, uh, through the, the wiki project, and uh, I look forward to your questions. Thanks. So um, I can read through some of the Q and A if you like. Uh, looks like. Uh, Huda had a question about um, being able to use geographic coordinates to tie together multiple mm -hmm. labels. Um, and uh, the comment, it's, it seems really effective. Has there been any interest in capturing if and when place names have changed over time, like capturing the timeline of place name changes? Um, and mm -hmm. then uh, part two, has there been any investigation of period O in this context? And thanks for the great presentation. Yeah, uh, Huda, thanks for this. Um, so there, there isn't, as far as I know, any uh, timeline necessarily of how place names change over time. Um, I guess the the best that I could think of is is really just the the work that uh, gazetteers are are doing. Um, so the World Historical Gazetteer and the uh, Pleiades. Um, that, that we're working in partnership with Pleiades uh, specifically relevant to ancient um, uh, Mediterranean primarily. They started with the Mediterranean, but are, are branching out um, beyond there. And, uh, but th there isn't necessarily a, a timeline component to either of those. It's, it's more collecting the uh, name variants um, as far as I know. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned Periodo, actually, where um, we are basically the uh, pilot project for Periodo's integration into Wikidata. 
Uh, so as, as you are probably aware, it's complicated um, to, to propose perhaps, you know, multiple um, entities for say the Roman period, right? The, the Roman period in Dori Ropos is a very specific uh, set of years that are not necessarily relevant to the Roman period or the same as the Roman period in even the city, you know, just uh, across the desert. Um, so it does make sense to define a, a say, a, a Roman period uh, for just Dori Ropos. Um, and if you're thinking in the in the context of um, you know uh, chronological labels, uh, I, I guess one would need to have a an overarching concept of you know a, a Roman date or a Roman time, a Roman period, uh, and then subcomponents that are relevant to you know specific regions or uh, specific cities even. In that case, and so that's what we're working through with with Periodo at this moment. Um, but it, it doesn't necessarily integrate the two uh, things that you're asking about, which are the the um, the naming traditions and the the chronological change. Uh, I think there's still so much work to to do on on both of those fronts that uh, the the intersection has not yet become um, uh, an area of research as as far as I uh, know. So thank you for that. Yeah, and I think um, there was a question on, um, mm -hmm. I think the, the link, uh, there's a Q link. Uh, let's see if I can put the chat. Um, there's this Q link and a question associated with it. So let's see. This oh, is the, okay. I think this is, uh, the question is related to, um, um, Arabic labels, like any suggested source for Wikidata contributors of Arabic language? Yeah, so it is possible to, as far as I know, what one has to do is to go into uh, your settings and select um, which languages you, you speak and are able to contribute in. And then, um, and then your uh, all of the Arabic labels should appear for you. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of, I don't have the Arabic uh, settings turned on on my uh, screen and because I didn't assume that we would necessarily have Arabic speakers in the audience, but I'm glad to see that we do. Um, and the other place that, that you can do it is um, say manually under each individual uh, item if, uh, say, so the, the Q label that, that you gave me was uh, for the Temple of Bell, Dori Ropos, if you click on all entered languages and uh, then look down, um, that's where you will see all of the, the languages that are so far present. And part of our uh, NEH project is to, to actually go one by one through uh, all of the Dura content and start generating uh, those Arabic translations for, for content that does not yet have them. So, but if you are an Arabic speaker and are interested in contributing, we would love to, to have your expertise uh, uh, contributing to the project. So thank you for that. Yeah, um, thanks for explaining the, the user settings. I, I think I found, a, looks like a guide for that. So um, I Oh, that wonderful, thank you. Okay, a new question came in. Um, oh, it's, I guess uh, you, you can add visible languages on Wikidata item pages to, in your Wiki uh, data profile by adding the uh, Bab Babel mm -hmm. template with the corresponding languages. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> and I think that's basically what what you uh, just posted in the in the chat too. That's everything I saw from Q and A. If if anyone wants to like raise your hand or something, I can uh, unmute you if you want to ask a question through Zoom. Uh, 
not seeing any hands. Um, Q and A. Looks like we got them all. Um, anything else you wanted to add before we close out the session? Um, we just uh, look back through my slides, make sure I didn't. Uh... <clears throat> No, I think that's that's pretty much it. Okay. So appreciate uh, everyone for attending and uh, thanks to, to Jim for uh, corralling the crowd. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks so much for presenting. We really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. And uh, thanks everyone for your excellent questions. Bye-bye. Uh, Have a good day and good weekend. Thanks. Bye.